Today I'm going to bake this chocolate cake. Now those of you who know me know that the only reason I would do this is to prove a point. Earlier I was asking people to compare the temperatures of these two objects. A science book written by Isaac Asimov and an old metal hard drive. Can you compare their temperatures? I'd say this one would be yeah, cold. that feels Metal. colder. Cold and nice room temperature. Can you, you tell would me say colder than that one. Yeah. What makes something hotter or colder? What what affects the, that? The actual material. I mean, paper is warm and metal is cold. Both of these objects have been sitting here on the ground for quite a while. So one might expect that they're at the same temperature. No, because this is a metal and that's mm -hmm. paper. But what if I left that outside all day? W would it be 15 degrees? No, because mm. paper doesn't absorb cold. Mm. Doesn't absorb cold? No. Well, I've left books out not all day um, outdoors and I can't say that I've noticed the book was cold when I've come to pick it up. Ever. What if I told you that these two objects are actually the same temperature? What would you say? Definitely not. If you take a temperature right now, this is colder. So let's say you're taking a cake out of the oven. Yeah. Would you be uh, worried about touching the cake? Yes. Well, not the cake itself, but the actual tin around the cake, because it'll be hot. Yeah, but how does the temperature of the tin compare to the temperature of the cake? Well, the cake will be warm, like hot, but not as hot as the tin. The tin's hotter because it's metal. Metal, mm. metal holds the mm. heat longer and holds the cold longer. Like if you, you don't touch think the, the tin would be the same temperature as the cake? Well, you think it's, if it's been like in 200 degrees Celsius, I mean, it'd probably be the same, but it somehow, it just doesn't feel like it will burn with metal, whereas my fingers will burn. But I mean, not if I stick my finger in the cake, it wouldn't burn as much. All right, it's time to take the cake out and find out if it's the same temperature as the tin. I have a meat thermometer with which to measure the, the temperature of the cake. I'm not sure that's the most accurate way of doing it, but well, it's the only thing I've got. So let's give it a shot. So I tried to measure the temperature of the cake using a meat thermometer, but unfortunately its temperature scale doesn't go high enough to allow me to accurately measure the temperature of the cake. You can actually hear the moment when I realized that my experiment wasn't going to work. Uh oh. So now I'm back in Vancouver and I thought I'd bring in the big guns to help me sort out this experiment. And by the big guns I of course mean uh, my mom. So, Derek, I understand we're going to make this vanilla cake mix together and see what happens. We've got a secret weapon, which is uh, this infrared thermometer, which can measure temperatures up to 300 degrees Celsius. So we should have no problems with it. We just point it at a surface and it gives us a readout of the temperature of that surface. So this should be perfect for measuring the temperature of the cake and the tin. Do you want to make a, a prediction about uh, the relative temperatures of the cake and the tin when we bring it out of the oven? Well, I really suspect that the tin is going to be a lot hotter than the cake. You can really not handle the tin at all. So I, I reckon that's what's going to happen. Okay. Well, I think they're both going to be the same temperature, but I could be wrong. So we're going to have to do the experiment and find out. All right. Let's get mixing. Okay. So it's been about a half an hour and the cake is cooked. It's ready to come out. Yeah. We're all ready to that go. That is your, your expert opinion as the master baker here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think so. Okay, we're going to take the cake out of the oven and we're going to check the temperature of the tin and the cake. Let's do it. Okay. Ooh, it looks like a good cake. Yeah, not a bad one. Okay, so let's measure the temperature of the cake. We have... 108.9. And the temperature of the tin? 118.6, but dropping. Over here? 108.1. So we have, uh, what would you say about the temperature of the cake and the tin? Pretty close. Much closer than I expected. Hmm, they're quite similar. They're both around 110 yes. uh, Celsius. That's my point, is that the tin and the cake are the same temperature. But the tin is going to conduct heat to your hand much faster than the cake. So the oh, tin would burn you, but the cake would not. Okay. But they're the same temperature. What if I were to impress upon you that they are in fact the same temperature? I'll take your word for it. And, and that, in fact, that these two are the same temperature. No, I don't agree with that. No. You don't think those are the same temperature? No. no. Really? I just can't believe this book is 15 degrees. It just doesn't feel it. <laughs> I just, don't, I I just can't believe it. In truth, there's no difference in the temperature between these two objects. If they've been in the same surroundings for a long period of time, they come to thermal equilibrium with their surroundings, which means they're both at the same temperature. But the metal feels colder because it's able to conduct heat away from my hand faster than the book. So just because an object feels colder 
that doesn't mean that it actually has a lower temperature. It may just mean that it's conducting heat away from your hand faster. I see. Well, it's interesting. Isn't it weird? I just learned something. <laughs>